Now that Kamala Harris is officially Joe Biden's 2020 running mate, the speculation over possible 2024 candidates really comes down to her and Vice President Mike Pence. However, this could only operate under the assumption that Joe Biden defeats Donald Trump in November and then makes the logical decision not to run again in 2024, setting up Kamala Harris for the nomination. And while Pence is likely to face a stiff challenge in the Republican primary from a number of different candidates, he'll remain the presumptive nominee until further notice. So how would a 2020 electoral map look between these two candidates following four years of a Biden-Harris administration? Obviously, it would depend on how successful Biden's presidency is, but it's fun to speculate nonetheless. Given that by 2024, we are set to see some dramatic changes in the electoral map. But before we get into the map itself, let's decide upon running mates for these two running mates. On the Republican side with traditional evangelical white conservative Mike Pence as the nominee, it's likely we'll see the Republican Party make a similar effort to the Democrats this year by looking to offer a more diverse ticket. Joe Biden and the Democrats had an expansive list of qualified and experienced female candidates that ranged from a number of different ideologies, ages, and ethnicities to choose from. The Republicans don't quite have the same luxury. However, they do have Nikki Haley, an Indian-American former governor of South Carolina and ambassador to the United Nations who has long been plotted as the future of the Republican Party. At just 52 years old in 2024, Haley would be an ideal running mate for Pence and thus will include her in today's video. As for Kamala Harris, the dynamic will be totally different. For her, it'll be an ideological gap that she'd look to fill. As the Democratic Party is bound to move further and further left, Harris will likely be ostracized by the quickly growing progressive wing, putting pressure on her to select a further left running mate in 2024. Could this be Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's time? Maybe but in my opinion, it would still be too early for her in her political career. A far more likely choice would be California Governor Gavin Newsom. As governor of the fifth largest economy in the world, Newsom has the skills, qualities, and donors that would make him an absolutely ideal choice for Harris. With a progressive enough record and background, he would both satisfy the progressive wing of the party, but also avoid scaring away moderates and independents, and thus he'll be the choice in today's video. So it's Pence and Haley versus Harris and Newsom, and away we go starting with all of the safe blue states for Kamala Harris, which includes Washington, Oregon, California and Hawaii, New Mexico, Illinois, New York, Maine's 1st District, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. And then all of the safe states for Mike Pence, Utah, Idaho, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska's two at-large electoral votes and its first and third districts, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, and West Virginia. So with that, Harris holds 185 electoral votes, two Pence's 110 in this new 2024 electoral map. So now let's label all of the likely states for both candidates, starting with Kamala Harris. Colorado and Virginia are the only two states I feel comfortable with labeling as likely blue in 2024, as both states have trended heavily into the Democrats' direction on a statewide level, but remain too competitive to label as completely safe. As for Pence, Montana, Iowa, and Ohio are all going to go into the likely column for him. Montana is a far more competitive state than people give it credit for, for the following reasons. 1. Obama lost by just two points in 2008. 2. It is looking likely that they'll have two Democratic senators with Steve Bullock and John Tester. 3. The state consistently features toss-up governor races. And 4. They are expected to get a second congressional district after the 2020 census that very much could be in play for the Democrats, especially with a Democratic governor. So for all of those reasons, I don't consider it safe for Republicans going forward. Iowa and Ohio, though, are two states that flipped heavily into Trump's likely column in 2016 and are probably going to stay likely moving forward, especially with Pence's favorability in the Rust Belt as compared to Harris. Moving on now to the lean blue states, Nevada, Arizona, Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Maine's two at-large electoral votes will all fall under that category. Arizona is trending more towards the Democratic Party than any state in the country, while the typically blue states of Nevada, Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Maine I expect to stall and not move much in favor of either party. 
Maine's second district and the state of South Carolina I see as lean in Pence's column. South Carolina should begin its leftward trend this November and continue into the next decade as the Sun Belt begins to shift more Democratic as a whole. However, I'm actually having second thoughts on South Carolina for this video because of Nikki Haley, who's a former governor of the state. She could possibly move it into the likely column with her favorabilities there, so I'm actually going to move it over to likely for the sake of this video. And with that, as things stand right now, the Harris Newsom ticket has a significant advantage at 241 electoral votes to the Pence Haley tickets 147. But that leaves the states I expect to be the real battlegrounds over the next decade. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and Texas. What really makes these states interesting is that while the Rust Belt is dominated by and will continue to be dominated by older and non-college educated white voters, the Sun Belt is adding more of the diverse, white collar, and urbanized voters at the core of the modern democratic coalition. Through the coming decade and beyond, the crucial variable that could tilt the national balance of power between the two parties may be whether the Democrats can leverage those demographic advantages in the Sun Belt to break the hold the Republicans have enjoyed on most of the region since at least the 1970s. That being said, let's start with the three Rust Belt states up here where the Republicans are expected to make gains over the next decade. We already saw this happen in 2016 with Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Iowa, and Ohio swinging hard in the Republicans' direction. But yet, Joe Biden is polling far ahead of Trump there in 2020 right now making it extremely hard to accurately predict what will occur in 2024. It could be that it's just Biden's favorability among the working class voters in this region that is pushing him ahead, a kind of favorability Harris lacks and Pence doesn't. And so for all of those reasons, I'm actually going to put Wisconsin and Pennsylvania in the tilt Republican column and leave Michigan as a toss-up for now. Moving on to the Sun Belt, however, as mentioned previously, the Democrats will need to make significant gains here in order to offset those Republican gains. The challenge facing the Democrats, however, is that while the demographic trends are favorable for them in the Sun Belt, the political attitudes among the white population specifically is not. This could expose the party to the risk that the Democrats' old coalition in the Rust Belt will crumble faster than its new coalition coalesces in the Sun Belt. If that happens, it could leave Democrats just short in enough key states in both regions to allow Republicans to remain competitive in presidential elections. Texas and Florida will be the single most important states for decades to come. With each state expected to gain multiple electoral votes, their electoral weight will grow even more. As of right now, Texas should, barring some significant demographic change or continued dismal voter turnout, be a tilt blue state by 2024, which would alone push Harris over the 270 mark. Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina should hypothetically follow suit and move into the tilt blue column. But my only concern with that is Nikki Haley's favorability across these three states. Her candidacy alone could be just enough to hold on to these states, which could be a convincing argument to feature her at the top of the ticket for the Republican Party instead of Mike Pence. But as of right now, I really don't feel confident in classifying any of the four states remaining, and so I will leave them as toss-ups for now. Maybe I'll update this again in a few months, but I hope you all enjoyed nonetheless. Please make sure to like the video if you did, and hit the big red subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Also make sure to check out more content on my channel right here. Thank you all so much for watching, and tune in next time. EP out.